Welcome to Galactic and Spiritual Health for the New Earth. This is episode two. It is about finding your inner key and freeing yourself from perceived illusions in your environment. So I'm just going to dive right in and go into a transmission that I received yesterday while I was doing some work. And it was interesting because I had some of my star family show up as well. Those who know me know that I love the Syrians and I love the Palladians and everything that those star systems represent. What came through specifically was the only cages and traps that we have are those that we create within our own mind. So I want you to really let that land. The only cages and traps that we have are the ones that we build in our minds. I will elaborate more on this as well as give you some action steps as well. I think this is hugely important because we do live in an energetic state. Everything is energy, even though things may seem solid like this table that's in front of me, the chair, everything vibrates at a very specific frequency. In quantum physics, they talk about the observer effect quite often. And quite simply, they have found that when observation is present, it can actually change the measured result. So think of that for a second here. If results can change depending on our observation, what does that begin to tell you? Even in a bigger way of thinking this as well, they have this in psychology where behaviors of people can change if they feel that they are being watched. Often people do not act naturally when they're being watched. So things can change depending on an observer. I want to bring this back into our five senses, especially the sense of sight. So in this instance, what we see can often be filtered by our emotions and our experiences, as well as unhealed trauma that we may have experienced growing up or in our teen years or in our adulthood as well. These things can happen regardless of which age we are. Most commonly things happen in childhood. And then we start to add on those belief systems as we get older. But the same can happen at any time in our life. So think about the fact that we can actually filter our sense of sight, okay? based on our emotions and our experiences. So if there has been a lot of manipulation in our life and a lot of control, often there's times where we feel powerless. Not because it's true, but because of past experiences and what has happened, it was true then. So we begin to see the future as what happened to me will dictate what happens in the future. And any time that we have these sort of beliefs, and they may even be subconscious, but if we have fear and other mechanisms that are in place, like societal conditioning and things of that nature, we begin to create these limitations in our mind. How often are we told and indoctrinated with growing up that all we need to do is, you know, get the best grades we can, go to college so that we can get a really good job. And that is the only way that you can be stable and safe. How many of you have heard that? So the thought of possibly going into something that maybe didn't meet the college curriculum feels almost like death and not attainable. 
and not doable. Many people may go to college for things and realize it's not their passion. But when they decide to get into what they're passionate about, sometimes it's not something they can fully learn in a university. And how many of these people don't follow through on their dreams or give up on creating a business for themselves because they were told that they cannot do it? And the background might be different. Well, of course, it's going to be different based on what you've experienced and what you've grown up with. But this is just, you know, a quick example as to someone saying you can't do this over and over and over, or maybe even in a subtle way, how that becomes our background voice, how that becomes a box in our head. We have to do X, Y, Z in order to accomplish a certain end result, like being stable, making lots of money, whatever the goal may be. We are told that there's only certain ways of doing things like this. Now, I want to bring this down to the energy levels as well, okay? So we have this 3D reality. And here's where I get into my, you know, weirdness, my cosmic side. And I love talking about this. So if you don't want to talk about different dimensions or hear about different kinds of energies or entities, then this episode may not be for you. And that's okay. And that's fine. But I'm embracing this side because there's so much going on underneath the surface that many are unaware of. So I want to relate some of this to some of my experiences. So for example, when you think of the limitations created in your mind, if you're in a situation where you feel like you have no control, that is typically what you're going to believe. I have no control and I am in danger. So that is almost a command. I am in danger. And it's almost as if that's a permission slip to be in danger. Sometimes the danger is not actually present, but our mind thinks it is. Example, I went to a meditation about seven years ago in Northwest Calgary. And it was set up as, it was an ascension meditation. It was one to open up your heart, to open up your energy. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. I'm in a new city. I could meet people that are very similar to me. And this is not to turn you off from going to these events because majority of them are amazing and they're good. But you also have to realize that sometimes things happen and it's around using your discernment. Even if you're in the situation, what can you do, right? So going back to this. I was in that meditation. At first, it started off okay, but just the energy felt off to me from the teacher, the facilitator. And I thought maybe I'm just, you know, being too judgmental, as we all do. But then I really started to think about it. Something really doesn't feel right. And yet I stayed. Why is that? So this helped me to realize if something doesn't feel right, it doesn't matter if something bad is actually going to happen. It doesn't matter if, you know, it's good or bad. There doesn't need to be that judgment. Sometimes something can be very good, but it's just not for you. So setting those judgments aside, does this feel right? Does it feel like it's going to nourish my soul? So I stayed. And after the first 10 minutes, I started realizing what was happening. He had asked everyone, after bringing them down into a vulnerable space, to collect all of their power in their body, to collect all of their power. So I'm like, okay, we're collecting all of our power, and what are we going to do with it? (laughs) And then he asked everyone to take their power, form it into an arrow, and shoot that arrow into the abyss. Word for word, I kid you not, he asked everyone to shoot their power away from them into the cosmos, into the abyss. Red flag started going off. 
the bells started ringing in my head and I started thinking, I need to get out of here. But here's the funny thing. In the beginning, he had said, once the doors close and we start the meditation, they are not to be opened until the meditation is complete. That should have been the first red flag, but for some reason it wasn't. And I thought, well, why would anyone want to leave? <laughs> so I gave my permission in a subtle way and consented to being there. And here's where I built something in my head saying, but he said, we can't leave. Consciously thinking back, obviously I could have left. I could have just gotten up and walked out that door. And if he had said anything, I could have just kept going. What was he going to do to me? <laughs> you know, so I already built this in my head. Well, I can't leave. So now I'm stuck. And now he's asking us to do all these things. So then I said to myself, I am not going to participate. I'm going to sit here and I'm just going to observe. What else do you do? So I still had that little rebellious side in me that said, well, you don't need to participate. And all of a sudden I heard my guides come through as well. And they said, you are here to observe and learn. So I thought, well, that's interesting. So I put my trust and faith into my guides and my own energy field to keep me safe. Now, in a previous situation, I had done something. In a previous situation, with a very dangerous situation, I energetically said in my mind to another person, you do not have permission to touch me. I do not consent to abuse. You are not allowed to be in my energy field. I resend all permission. There's many different ways you can word this. Those are just a few. And when that happened, he literally backed away from me and his face went white and he ran out of the building. So in that moment, I remembered that situation and I thought, okay, okay, cool. I'll just do that. So I waited for the time for that permission statement to come through. At this point, I just wasn't participating. He was getting them to shoot their power away. And then he had us lay down in two interesting circular ways, I suppose. But the way that people were sitting, it's, it was kind of like a pentagram in a way. It's like a circle with a pentagram in the middle with the way people were laying down. And somehow I managed to be on the inside of that human pentagram. <laughs> Of course, it would happen to me, right? So when that happened, I thought, oh, great. What is he doing now? So I did lay down and then I watched him. He said he was going to go around and activate everyone. And at this time, I had no idea what activations were. And this gave me kind of a negative sense of that. So going forward, I was very leery of these sort of things but I also know it's about the person's energy and what they're really trying to do that matters. So I watched him going around touching people in random parts of their body. It was nothing inappropriate. It wasn't any erogenous zones but here's where I thought okay I don't want him to activate me. I don't actually know what he's doing and he's not giving us any information. It does not feel right. Regardless if it was good or not, I don't care at this point. He's not explaining anything, and I just need to get the heck out of there. So he turned down the lights before he started doing this. The only light we had was this, you know, dark candlelight. So you could just see about a few feet in front of you and the person next to you. So I thought that was interesting. And then he came around activating everyone. And everyone seemed totally cool with this. And I mean, that's fine. But there was two other people that I looked at. And they looked at me. And they had fear in their eyes before we did this circle. And I saw one girl mouth to me, what is going on? And I just shrugged my shoulders. So there was three out of probably 25 people, maybe 30, that thought something is up. So he came around to me and I thought, I don't want your activation. So in my head, I said, you do not have permission to activate me. You do not have permission to touch me. 
you do not have permission to be in my energy field. And I squinted my eyes open just a little bit so I could see him. And he got this really funny look on his face. He kind of looked confused and puzzled. He didn't do anything to me. He didn't touch me. He didn't even come into my energy field. He just kind of shook his head and it went to the next person. And on it went until everyone was quote unquote activated. And at the end, he basically had asked everyone to come into, I think it was a program of his to be like his students, which is fine, I suppose. But to me, they were in a very vulnerable state. He took away their power. He did some activation. And now while they're in this daydreamy, trance-like state, he's asking each person for, you know, thousands of dollars. Which, okay. And it's not really about the dollar amount. It's just the way that it was done to me that felt really weird. And just the symbolism and how everything was felt very dark and felt very satanic in nature. I have seen other satanic cults in action previously, and it was very, very similar. Not saying that's exactly what it was, but to me, that's exactly how it felt. And when you think Satanism, it's not exactly what you see on the TV. It's not exactly people cutting themselves and bathing in blood and, you know, things like that. They can be very subtle. They'll do certain placements to create certain symbolism, say and do very subtle things to gain access and control on many that are seemingly unaware. And then they become very involved. So after all of this was done and all of this was happening, you know, I basically just got out of there. <laughs> And I thought, wow, this is powerful. I had created this box in my mind that I was literally stuck. I couldn't leave, but I was still able to be in control of my own energy. And this is the point that I want to share with you. I'm not dismissing past traumas. I'm not dismissing extremely dangerous situations. But internally, we do have this deep, deep power. We are powerful creators. We are very spiritual, high-frequency beings in this 3D human existence. Remembering who we are at the core and our limitless capabilities, it can really show you what things are really just an illusion that you don't have to participate in or give your permission to. And another thing that came up as well, and here's where I'm going to go into some of the entity side because it's been 10 years of me dealing with entities in a way where it's a professional thing for me. I actually really enjoy working with different kinds of energies to understand them and what's really happening. So I made that a purpose in my job is to really see the different dimensions, the different energies and who they are and why. One interesting thing that happened to me also in Calgary, I don't know why all of this has happened to me in Calgary <laughs> and I love the city. I don't know, but I know just a side note on that. I know apparently Calgary has a big portal. So if you look at the ley lines and the grids of the earth, Calgary has a major portal. It's supposed to be one of the light cities eventually in the future at some point. So with that, I'm assuming right now with the ley lines and the portals, there is a way for lower frequency energy to exist. To me, it's almost as if there's all frequencies, but I do feel as if there's a purging and a cleansing process to these energy grids and ley lines of the earth, and it's just being revamped, re-energized as we move past the 3D realities and the illusions, it allows the energetic grids to naturally cleanse so back to this piece, there was a really interesting entity in someone's apartment. And I was asked to do some clearings and things to that effect because I do house and land clearings. So I went 
And I brought a friend with me at the time. And I started doing the clearing and something felt different. It wasn't a regular spirit. Normally I can communicate pretty well with those, you know, when they allow it, essentially, because you can't force any energy to necessarily speak. But it was interesting. I've seen demonic things or things that you would consider to be demonic. I've seen regular spirits that have passed on. I've seen spirits stuck in limbo. I've seen different kinds of energies. And this one specifically, I have never seen anything like that before, at least not to my recollection. I've seen really weird looking energies, but nothing like this. So the energy I saw when it finally presented itself to me, it was this really tall, but also kind of lanky. And it looked like it had saggy skin and you could really see the bones and the face was pretty much blank. And it was holding etheric type shackles. And on the other end of shackles, I could see other spirits. So this person had been having nightmares, had been having other distress throughout the day, never wanted to be home anymore, was having weird leaks, and I know not every leak is paranormal, okay? I understand that, but this was a new condo. Things had been checked out, everything was fine, yet all these random leaks would happen. Weird noises that couldn't be explained. Again, I know it's a condo, so a lot of these noises can be dismissed. I understand that. But then I saw what I saw. And when I tried to move it out, it physically tried to attack me. I ended up with a whole bunch of scratches on my arms. And of course, since I had never dealt with anything like that, I automatically went into fear thinking, I'm in danger, this thing can harm me. Instead of harnessing my power, I actually sat in a door frame and I just tried to collect my strength and thought, what is happening? Thankfully, my other friend that was there at the time was able to just hold some of that space for me for a moment so I could figure out what this was. Not something I dealt with. I haven't had anything this aggressive. And from what I could see, it was entering in that astral plane that the guy I was doing the clearing for had been entering in his sleep. So he was having disturbing chaotic, violent, gory dreams. And what I've come to know now is that possibly he was actually going into a lower vibration of this 3D reality, which can be known in other terms as the underworld. Some people refer to it as hell. Some people just refer it to like a step down from the 3D. And everyone can experience it a little bit differently. So I saw that and automatically in my head, I knew this was a soul collector. And in that moment, I knew I had to call upon Archangel Michael because in this moment, I didn't feel strong enough to deal with it. I didn't feel like I knew what it was. I didn't feel like I had any idea how to get a handle on it. So the best thing that I know how to do is when I'm afraid of an energy and I don't feel necessarily safe, even though we are always safe, our mind plays weird tricks on us. <laughs> so when that happens, I call in the ascended masters or the angels that help me to feel stable and safe until I feel ready to handle it on my own. And there will be a time where you do handle it on your own. So they joined in for the first little while and they just held space. They didn't do anything. And they told me is I had to learn how to remove this from the house. I had to learn how to kind of move it out of the energy field so that it's no longer affecting me. And again, that permission statement came into my head. And I gave it to the client as well because I could feel that this 
soul collector wasn't going to leave and I couldn't send it anywhere else. Normally I'll open up a temporary portal, ask them where they want to go, and I'll just let them be sucked up through that portal to where they want to go. It's not necessary to de destroy everything because everything has a purpose. Unfortunately, in this 3D reality, there's a lot of things that are here to teach us. So it wouldn't go through the portal. It wouldn't leave no matter what type of energy thing that I used. So then I asked my guides, well, if we can't, you know, get it to leave, then what do you do? And the next thing I heard was, stand in your power. Eventually, these types of energies, if they can't get to you physically, they will come into your dream state. And if they can't do either, they will eventually move on. Unfortunately, I don't know how to fully get rid of them. I'm not entirely sure of their purpose. There must be something bigger at play. I'm not sure. But there are many of them, and I've seen many of them since that day. So this brings me back to my work yesterday. And the image came up around these things. They showed me the energetic imprisonment that they create. And they showed it to me in the form of a cage. They showed me the soul inside. And when I say they, I mean my guides, <laughs> not the soul collectors. Um, but my guide showed me. They showed me the soul collector. They showed me the cage. They showed me the soul inside. And they showed me the door. They said, this is the most important thing. There's a door and it has a lock. Who do you think has the key? And I thought to myself, well, the soul collector has the key. Otherwise, we would just leave. And my guide said, do you really think so? Do you really think they have something that is naturally yours, that is your birthright, that is a part of you? Do you really think that they have that? And I didn't know what that meant. And they said, think of your free will. We all have free will. We all need to consent and give our permission to certain things, whether it's subtle through manipulation and trickery, but regardless, Permission is usually given. Otherwise, they can't. So I realized the key is really owning our power. Our key is knowing that we do not need to consent. We can resend permission if it's ever given. At times, we may subtly give a permission for something that isn't good for us. And we do learn from it. I do believe some of these things need to be good learning experiences, as I've had to observe the most bizarre, crazy experiences like satanic rituals and like <laughs> witch churches and satanic churches and cults in action that guise themselves as self-improvement. So when they said this, the key is your power and free will. And they showed me a soul that had regained their power through knowing they're in charge of their energy. And the moment they realize that, it's like their solar plexus lit up, their fire inside lit up, and that door blasted wide open. I thought that was really, really powerful. And especially those who are dealing with different energies and entities. You can absolutely resend that permission. You can absolutely say, I do not consent. I do not give permission. I resend any permission on any levels, time, dimension, or space that I may have given. You can do that. And I've done it many times over. And the moment I say, you do not have permission to touch me or do anything to me, it's weird how they back off. And you don't need to 100% be fully believing in that either because the first time I ever did it, I didn't believe it, but I was halfway there, I would say. Like, yeah, I do have power, but I still feel as if I'm powerless. So you can be in that halfway point and still know the power of this. 
And since then, I've been doing this from a pa- place sorry, of compassion and love. I can hold my heart and say, I do not consent. This is not for me. Instead of judging the situation, I can just observe, be neutral, step back. And know that ultimately, our energy is sacred. Our energy is our own. The biggest change comes when we start to understand that we are powerful. And that we do need to evolve and grow. That we can go into emotional health and wisdom. That we do not need to repeat old patterns and behaviors. You do not need to consent to cycles that may have been happening even for generations. You do not need to consent to carrying that forward. I know things are encoded in our DNA. I know we carry emotional charges. But this is a way to help us feel more in alignment and actually know that we are not helpless, powerless, worthless, insignificant. And it's not coming from an ego state. It's just realizing that on a good day, most of us use 10% of our brain. What about the other 90? What does that do? So just some questions for you to think about. So how can you put this into action in your day-to-day life? What are some things that you've been consenting to that you no longer need to? It does not have to be a crazy situation. It could be something just very simple. Say if you get pulled into a gossiping triangle, just to keep it basic. You can say in your head, I don't consent to this. You can also say, I'm not going to participate. And you can step away. Sometimes, though, what will happen is that others will get, you know, more upset when you start laying this down. And they might try to stimulate more fear for control, more manipulation for control. And when you really start to use your discernment, you can actually really start to see the illusions around you. And I'm not saying all politics are bad and that we shouldn't trust anyone. But for example, when it comes to politics and our power, we feel as if we need to give all of our power to one person that's elected. Instead of realizing as collective consciousness and collective humanity, even though there is someone in power, we still hold that power. If they do not hold the highest standards and our highest good for the country and for us as individuals, we have a say. We do not need to wait till next election time. We can all band together compassionately as well as peacefully and say this does not represent us or our best interest. The power is in us, the people big numbers, but also within us. So let me know if this was valuable for you. And if you do have questions on this, I do welcome that. But I really do hope that this does help and this does land for you. Thank you so much for listening. And I will talk to you soon.